So 1939 was the first year of production for the company. And the women that came there off these farms, the girls, they worked in the canning factory. They were paid, not were shared with money. And they had some bank credit from the Imperial Bank at Niagara Lake. Okay. And they went into the production of tomato juice, tomatoes, prunes, cherries, uh, pea, uh, beans, cut beans, uh, peaches, pears, all kinds of, all the fruit that they were putting into, instead of it rotting, they put it into cans and they could sell it later on. And not only that, it gave an awful lot of the young girls and the women a little bit of money that worked there in the canning factory. There was no work uh, in the Depression days uh, for anybody. And here now they had jobs part-time, but uh, nevertheless it, uh, it all helped. And uh, 1939 was the first year of production, and, the produ and then the war came along. And uh, England needed lots of food. And the armies and the soldiers, uh, they needed lots of food over there in England. So they went into real high gear producing to send the food. I don't know how, many, how much of that food ended up at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean with the submarines that were sinking the ships, but a lot of it got through. So they were helping feeding England, but of course they were paid for the canned mm -hmm. goods. Okay. And the Niagara Canning Company, the, uh, the, the trade name was Pride of Niagara on the label. When you saw a can, it didn't matter what it was, it was Pride of Niagara, cherries or peaches or whatever. But that's why how the canning factory came about was that it was a, my father felt it was a moral obligation to he told all these people to grow to grow fruit and now the food's rotting on the ground and half of it's rotting on the ground because there's no sales. Okay. But the idea of settling the Mennonites in Niagara close to the lake within the peach area now some of them have done very well. So during the war years, with all this part of Niagara going into England, it, it, the English people became very well aware that part of Niagara was excellent, excellent quality, top, top quality for vegetables, for fruit, and they developed a real big market in England. In 1948, three years after the war, okay, Niagara Canning Company now has another factory in Dunville, predominantly for tomatoes. Dunville is not for fruit, but for vegetables, peas, beans, and uh, tomato juice, and tomatoes, and things of that type. And then the uh, Niagara Canning Company here in, on the Lakeshore Road. So you see, the canning season here is very seasonal. You've got to do a whole year's work in a matter of three months, four months. So to do a whole year's work in three months, you lean heavy on the bank mm -hmm. to pay for all this food that's coming in that's going to be sold January, February, March, April, May the following year. So you needed financing to carry you through. So now, 1948, the warehouses are jammed, and even the St. Catharines Airport, they had, there was one hangar there that, there was a, that they rented to put in a lot of the canned goods and the preserves that were already canned. 87% uh, of everything that was canned was booked, sold, but not paid for until delivery to England, 87% of the whole pack. So in early November or late October, England was in financial, the country was in financial difficulty because of the war. 
and England was going bankrupt. So England declared to go off of the gold standard and they became the sterling standard, which is the gold was high, the sterling was a lower level. Okay? The sterling standard. And to this day, England is still on sterling. And when they went to the sterling standard, they stopped all imports of anything from any country that is on the gold standard. And Canada is on the gold standard. So England bought all their stuff from Australia, South Africa. Those countries were on the sterling standard. Canada the United States were on the gold standard. So when they declared that and stopped all this, for all the stuff that's packed in the warehouses here, it was all booked to be sold there, but none, all those sales, shh, gone. And the bank said, uh-oh, Mr. Wall, you're in trouble. We're calling all the notes. Um, the company went bankrupt. 